Mr. Kimler, you've got um, Adam Casey, sentencing clause number 23, DCCR 0988. All right, sir, you're Adam Casey. And Mr. Casey was previously in court, entered a plea of guilty to the state jail felony offense of abandoning or endangering a child with intent to return. There was an agreement, it looks like, for a five-year probation period. It was unagreed as to the type of probation. Is that correct? Yes, yes, um, I've reviewed the pre-sentence report. Has everyone had an opportunity to review that report? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Kimler, go ahead. Please. All right, the first issue is uh, the type of probation. Uh, the court will review briefly Mr. Uh, Casey's criminal history. The court will see that he doesn't have any prior felony convictions. He did have one prior deferred back in 2014 for delivery of marijuana they completed successfully I that was, that was, that probably should have speak up Mr. Kimmel I'm sorry that was a, I believe that was a state jail case and he did successfully complete the deferred term this doesn't have a uh, felony conviction there isn't any indication that he has any other felony criminal history there are some misdemeanor cases it looks like for uh, marijuana and controlled substances offenses nothing uh, violent it appears from the misdemeanor history the defendant as a report indicates is currently employed as a, uh, I believe a deckhand and uh, associated marine services associated marine services deckhand on a uh, push boat or barge 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 this requires licensing and there's various coast guard licenses that he has to maintain to keep that employment uh, my concern is with the felony conviction that may impair his ability to maintain his license, licensure to keep that employment. Obviously, he's the main breadwinner in the family. The court knows that the associated cases, his wife, who's also set for sentencing, or the mother of the child that he cohabitates with, Chelsea Allen. The court would just, if I could overlap it briefly on her employment history, is not that she's more of a minimum wage type of worker. So the main breadwinner in the family. It's Mr. Casey. And as far as him being able to maintain his employment and licensure through the Coast Guard for that, uh, I guess it's a tankerman license or whatever. It's a uh, like marine time license. Okay, that licensure, I think that it would be the uh, incumbent that he get deferred adjudicated probation to avoid the felony conviction. And, and I suppose, you know, I don't want to speak out of turn for Mr. Coleman, but I think they probably looked at the prior deferred that he received and thought, well, he's had deferred once and he doesn't deserve to get it twice. But there may be some other reason there also. But in any case, the other thing that I noticed in the pre sentence report that raised some concerns with me is that and the recommendation is that he doesn't have any contact with the child. And that seemed to me to be a little bit. Uh, excessive in that this this case doesn't involve violence or uh, I guess physical abuse. It was an abandonment with intent to return. Both of them left the child in a vehicle when they went inside the municipal court to try to take care of the traffic ticket. They he's done everything that CPS is ordering to do and is currently complying with everything. Right? I'll get to all that. Yeah, and it just seems like CPS. Should, all right, Mr. Coleman. I'll be brief, Judge. The only uh, the uh, the defendant is here through uh, his own actions, and if that has a negative impact on his licensing, then it's because of uh, his his own fault. Uh, the state's recommendation is based on the defendant's criminal history and the nature of the offense, the nature of leaving this infant child in a car that reeked of marijuana. And that's really all I have. To if I can just respond briefly, it seems like that obviously he's got to support the family, and that's in the child's interest that he maintain employment, that he's able to support the family. So I don't... Do you have regular drug testing with your job? Yes, ma'am. Would you pass a test today? No, ma'am. Why not? Uh, we're going to get probation, so we're going to stop. We stop last Friday. So you're on. What, are you, what would you be doing? Marijuana. It's, a... it's not. That's it. Just... Right. It's just not. That's it. You have 
how many prior marijuana-related marijuana offenses there was marijuana smell with the baby in the car with you and your baby's mother. You're here thinking, yep, she's just going to give me probation, so we'll start a week before. Stop smoking when you shouldn't have been smoking the whole time. Like, that is the craziest thought process. So all this talk about your job and how important it is, what if they drug test you? It must not be that important to you. It is. It's not. Clearly it's not. Taking care of your family is clearly not a priority if you're still smoking marijuana, knowing that you could lose your job, knowing that you could go to prison, then there's something wrong with how you're thinking. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Have a seat in the jury box and I'll think about it. I'm going to hold that at one for a few okay. minutes. Okay. I'll think about them and take care of it in just a minute. Because it's the same issue. He said they did quit a week ago. Miss Allen, come have a seat up here in the jury box as well. And not next to each other. In a recall, um, Adam Casey, Mr. Kimmler. Yes, sir. Okay, so Mr. Casey, um, again, we've already gone over what you were here for, what you pled guilty to. You uh, told me, I'm not going to worry about getting a test, that you would test positive for smoking marijuana after all of the things that I've read and seen in your pre-sentence report. Um, I am willing to follow this uh, probation, but there are going to be some conditions uh, that were not anticipated today. And um, the only, I want you to know, as I'm saying what those are, it's the only way I'm going to follow the agreement and give you probation. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find that you entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily. I'm going to find sufficient evidence to find you guilty. Um, I am going to give you the opportunity on a deferred probation because it, I want you to be able to work and provide. So I'm going to defer all proceedings and place you on probation for a period of five years. Um, I'm going to order a fine in the amount of $1,000. I'm also going to order that you enter and successfully complete the ISF program, the cognitive track of ISF. That means you're going into custody today. It's a 90 day program. That is to help you make better thinking decisions. And when you are released, you are going to be required to enter and successfully complete the JCDI program for drug treatment, because obviously you need help with two different things in order to be successful in the future. This is what I'm doing, period. Please. Nope, there's no please. Same thing's happening to her. So y'all need to, if you, y'all need to stop. And you need to calm down because y'all are the ones that made the decisions that you made that make absolutely zero, zero sense. And so the only way that I feel comfortable with you being out on probation and possibly getting your child back is that you go through and get some kind of treatment so that you make better decisions and so that you'll stop smoking marijuana a week before court. Nope, there's no raise in your hand. I'm not going. Well, then you'll have to get another one when you get out. And I hate that for you. But that, listen, stop. You stop talking, or things could be even worse. Listen, I'm not doing this to you. I y'all did this to yourself. You did this to yourself. I didn't do this. So. There's no, I'm sorry for doing this to you. I'm giving you what I think is your best possible situation to be able to be successful. All right. So again, your order to the IS. So and here's the thing. You've got the deferred probation. This is a program to help you do better. When you get out, you're still on a deferred probation. You don't have a felony conviction on your record you're going to be able to be successful. And if you are, the case gets dismissed at the end and you don't have the felony conviction. If you, hang on, if you violate any condition of probation, then you're going to be back in court and you're going to be found guilty and you'll be going to prison for up to two years. Do you understand? 
I'm handing you the trial court certification that shows this was an agreement that I followed. And so you've waived your right to appeal. You can go back with the bailiff. Ms. Allen, come up, ma'am. So you're Chelsea Allen. And Ms. Allen, you were previously in court, entered a plea of guilty to the state jail felony offense of abandoning or endangering a child. I've received a copy of the pre-sentence report. Has everyone had an opportunity to review that report? Yes, sir. Are there any additions or corrections? No, sir. So you went through an outpatient substance abuse treatment just last year, right? And you did that through Spindletop, and you're still smoking marijuana a week before court. Are, are you smoking marijuana? Did you smoke marijuana over the years? Yes. So based on that, and based on the fact that you've had outpatient treatment, and you're smoking marijuana a week before court, obviously that gives me concern. And I'm going to... Any, uh, any other... I think the court will address this with uh, the way you're fashioning this probation, but she did minimize and I highlighted. You know, I did too. She kind of minimized her uh, responsibility for this office. Well, she does have uh, obviously some mental health issues that she's followed through with the spinal shock. And at least she's honest here. She well, and I, and I, and here's the thing I, I, I mean, you can get some points for being honest, but you also have to make better decisions. And when you've already gone through treatment and you're in waiting for a felony court and you're still making those bad decisions, then the only way for me to have any sense of responsibility, I think, to what I have to do and to the community and for your child and for you to be successful is to get you more intensive help than what you've already had. So I'm sorry. Listen, I, I, I appreciate what y'all are saying, but I didn't get, I, I, again, I did not get you here. I'm going to find that you entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily find sufficient evidence to find you guilty. However, I'm going, and I'm going to follow the agreement and defer all proceedings and place you on probation for a period of five years. You're ordered to pay that $1,000 fine and you're ordered to, um, Yes, Your Honor, my thinking was that perhaps the court's concerns could be addressed to the nation. I'm right. considering right. something a little bit different um, for Miss Allen. I know that probably doesn't help a lot financially, but just based on the situation before with Spindletop, just take a breath. We do have that here. I know. Take a breath. I mean, do you understand? Do you understand why I am where I am? And how irresponsible and how ridiculous the decision was to smoke. What? Well, I mean, you would. Well, it's not a matter of y'all leaving each other. It's a matter of you making this. And it, and it may be if that's what makes you make better decisions. Right. So if you have. Hang on. Listen to me. All right. If you're feeling pressure to make decisions and to smoke and these decisions that make no sense, then you have to do at this point, what's right for you, because you, regardless of what happens to him are looking at going to prison for making those decisions, whether you feel pressure for them, whether you make them on your own, it's time for you to take that personal responsibility and do what's best for you and your child that you don't even have right now. And that you're not going to get if you keep making these bad decisions. Right? Yes. All right. So here's what I'm going to do, Chelsea. I'm going to order as a condition of your probation that you enter and successfully complete the JCDI program or um, the spinal top ATAR program, the drug program through spinal top, whichever one probation feels is more appropriate, then that's what you're going to be ordered to do. Those are outpatient programs. That means you can be out. You can try to salvage whatever you can without his income for a few months. And you can make some decisions on what's best for you. Right. And 
you can make those decisions without any pressure. Okay. So this is your opportunity. You're not going to get it again. Do you understand? So if you violate this probation, you're going to be back in here. I'm going to remember because y'all have been, unfortunately for certain people, I remember, I don't always remember things and they can tell you that when I do remember, it's usually not a good thing, right? Because I remember I either gave you some opportunity that someone said I might not should, that's going to be reminded uh, to me when we come back. I want you to take this opportunity and do right. You're going to have to do parenting classes if you haven't already through CPS. I completed though. Good. I completed parenting classes. Good. Dental health classes. Good. And uh, this is Perfect. So as far as you having visitation with your child, what is the situation? And are there any court orders right uh, now? The court order for the visitation for a child is that uh, we are supposed to visit him every Sunday from what to So y'all have some family court orders already? Yes. Is that through CPS and the family court or just CPS? Uh, I believe it's through the family court. Okay. Uh, they it's told us when our case got closed that they were waiting for the judge to sign off on the agreement we made for visitation. Okay. And so here's that. the thing. I'm fine with visitation. But it's not going to be unsupervised until I make yeah, sure that you get. Okay, I'm sorry. that's okay. That's okay. So if you get to a point in the family law matter where they start allowing unsupervised visitation, you need to talk to your probation officer about that so that I can then modify if I feel like it's appropriate and you've done everything you're supposed to on probation because you have to have my permission to have unsupervised visitation with the child as well. So not just them, but me too. And that's going to depend on how you're doing in JCDI or through this mental, top, mental health and um, uh Substance abuse services, if you're doing everything you're supposed to, you're following all those rules, you've done everything through CPS and family court, then I want you to get your child back. I want you to have those visitations and be working towards that. It's only going to happen if I feel like you're doing everything you're supposed to. All right. So this was an agreement. I followed it. You have waived your right to appeal. I'm going to hand you the trial court certification that shows this was that agreement. And so you have waived it. Um, anything else, Mr. Coleman? Okay. So again, Ms. Allen, I want you to take advantage of this opportunity, right? You make decisions. There's going to be, I'm sure he's very upset, uh, but you need to make decisions for yourself right now with the opportunity that you're being given. Okay. Yes. All right. Have a seat probation. I'll talk to you when she's um. Ready. Just put all. Yes. 